we get to talk to Congressman Rick Crawford when we get to talk to him on Fridays. Uh, Rick, how are you, sir? Doing good, doing good. How, are you surviving in this impeachment uh, environment? I mean, tell us what's going on. I, I know the Judiciary Committee is now going to meet this morning, right? Right. They were in session until, oh, somewhere, you know, probably after 11 o'clock, maybe later than that. They decided to postpone the vote until um, this morning. So they're supposed to actually vote here in about an hour and a half, something like that. But, I mean, it's uh, it's it's a complete sham. Mitch McConnell came on last night and said that there was zero chance of this ever uh, being uh of, of, of President Trump being removed, so you know it's just it's all a political show. I could I could tell. I mean, you know, uh, Congressman Doug uh, Collins was furious. You know, he's the ranking member on the Judiciary Committee. That you know, it was like a last minute. They were going to vote yesterday, and at the last minute, Jerry Nadler's like, "Nope, we're going to vote tomorrow." Where the you know the cameras will be there, and now it's going to continue right. into the weekend. So it very much is a farce. I mean, this is all theater trying to convince the American people that the president. Is uh, has done something wrong here? How does it go from quid pro quo to bribe to oh well now we'll just we'll do a, a, abuse of power? That just seems very vague to me. Well, it's it's very nebulous, loosely defined, arbitrary, subjective, all of those things, and it's, that's by design. What they're really trying to do is to hang this scarlet letter on the president to damage his electoral prospects. They don't have a credible candidate that you know that obviously they know they can't beat him at the ballot box. And so they're trying to weaken him and diminish him as he heads into the 2020 cycle. And it's actually having the opposite effect. And, and they should have learned from um, the 1998 issue. The difference between this and 1998 with Clinton is that Clinton actually had committed a crime. However, I've, I'm still no, and you know, in, in hindsight being 2020, I mean, you still look at that and go, well, he didn't commit a crime against the people of the country as much as he did. I mean, you know, he lied to Congress. I don't know if that was necessarily uh, sufficient um, to remove him from office. Uh, politically, I would say no. Obviously, it didn't have the, the effect that the Republicans at the time desired. Um, but the fact remains that there was an underlying crime for which he was charged. This is different. There is no underlying crime. This is just a charge of abuse of power. Uh, let me let me describe abuse of power. When an elected official uh, without authority uh, seizes the phone records of a sitting member of Congress and members of the media and publishes that in a report, that to me constitutes abuse of power. And um, then the other charge of uh, contempt of or, no, or uh, obstruction of Congress, obstruction of Congress. I mean, this process has been going on 71 days. There are criminal investigations that take longer than that, and it takes it takes longer for FBI agents to gather evidence in many cases before they even would um, charge obstruction of justice. And so, it doesn't even none of this rises to the level of impeachment. It's purely a political ploy. We're talking with Congress, Congressman Rick Crawford. I'm glad you mentioned uh, that you know stuff about what Adam Schiff did you know, releasing the phone records, because that actually is the perfect segue here. You had the Nunes memo. We, we're now in the wake of the IG report. We can read it. We know what's in there. They, they set the president up. And we, we have the Nunes memo. We can go back and read what Devin Nunes put out. It was true. He's totally vindicated. But what Adam Schiff put out and his memo, I mean, he lied. And he oh. has essentially torn this country apart because – Right. of his lies. Right. You know, and ironically, there is no um, process for impeachment of a member of Congress. There is the ability to expel a member of Congress. I've actually drawn up uh, a resolution, a motion to expel Adam Schiff. That's ready to go at a moment's notice. We obviously have overwhelming support in the Republican Party. We don't expect Democrats to go along with it. And so... That means that it would probably be a show vote. He's not going to be removed. However, Devin Nunes, is, is, uh, he's taking legal action because it's one thing, you know, members of Congress are pr protected under the speech and, clause, uh, speech and debate clause of the Constitution. They can pretty much say whatever they want to on the floor 
uh, and that extends to committee. They can say what they want in, in their official capacity in the House of Representatives, but saying something and doing something like what Adam Schiff did with regard to uh, seizing those phone records, uh, that's different. That's not protected under speech and debate clause. That's probably um, criminal action, and, and so um, Devin Nunes is more than likely, if he hasn't already, going to be taking legal action um, against Adam Schiff. Now, if there's legal action taken against him and he's indicted, um, much like any other member of Congress, as he's indicted, he can no longer vote um, during that period. He's removed from committees. So he, he it's not that he's removed from uh, the House, but he would no longer be able to you know, occupy a, a seat on a committee. He would just be here marking time. I'm not sure if he'd have his voting privileges stripped or not, um, but at any rate, what that would do would, would be for them to be uh, force him a, a away from his positions on committee, and so, and until the case is adjudicated. So, uh, you know, look, the evidence is very clear what he did, not just to Devin Nunes, but also to some reporters, one in particular, John Solomon, who had exposed an awful lot of wrongdoing with regard to, um, you know, the mishandling of, of information regarding. Uh, Ukraine regarding a, a, a laundry list of issues that he's covered and covered, you know, credibly. That's the problem that that Adam Schiff has is that there are actually members of the media out there who do their job, and and they, you know, the mainstream media heaps scorn on them for it. Um, but you know, in, institutions like CNN, um, MSNBC, Washington Post, New York Times, and others have have dropped all pretense of being news outlets with any kind of journalistic integrity or, or ethics. They are purely an arm of the Democrat Party, and, and they function as a propaganda organ for people like Adam Schiff and provide, attempt to provide him political cover while he does what he does. And, of course, the same thing applies to Pelosi. Here's the thing with Pelosi, though. She term limited herself to four terms as Speaker. This is her fourth term. She's going for broke here. She has nothing left to lose. The reason she did this is because the squad was orchestrating potentially a motion to vacate the chair if they didn't get their way. And that would have meant, that would have, in her mind, stained her legacy forever as having been forced out of her position as Speaker. And so rather than run the risk of uh, the progressive wing of her party dropping a, a motion to vacate the chair on her, she decided to capitulate give them what they wanted so she could retain her position as speaker until such time as she's either term limited out or she's voted out more likely uh, either way she's gone in, in the in uh, 2020 and so she i think opted for this action to preserve what legacy she might think she has in her mind um, as opposed to being forced out by the progressive wing of her own party we're talking with congressman rick crawford how do you interpret the Horowitz report, the Inspector General report, we've been waiting on. I know, you know, the initial thing that he says in that very long report is, you know, he didn't find any political bias. But um, we also have the U.S. Attorney John Durham looking into this and comments by Attorney right. General Barr. W what are your thoughts on all of that? Well, I think folks need to realize that the best analogy for what an IG does in this context, um, you compare them to the HR department of a corporation. The HR department exists ostensibly to protect the workforce when, in fact, what they really exist for is to protect the corporation from being sued. So the, the, the HR department is acting as an agent for the corporation to prevent legal action being taken against them uh, for things that might happen involving the workforce. That's essentially what the IG is, is how he's conducted himself. He's basically trying to represent um, the agency without – presenting a case that um, makes them look bad. Uh, at the same time, if, if you also have to understand that he has limited authority. Um, there are former employees that he cannot um, question, and they're not compelled to cooperate because he doesn't have that authority. He's not, doing, he's not conducting criminal investigation, whereas Durham is. Durham is conducting a full-on criminal investigation, and so that's why there's there's a difference between his perspective and the IG perspective. So 
you're going to see a different set of findings. Um, there's already been, in, in spite of the fact that, that Horowitz um, is acting as the IG, and, and so the limited authority and scope that, that that implies, in spite of that, he still, there's been at least one criminal referral as a result of his findings. And so um, that really says something, too. And the other thing is a really a high bar with regard to any kind of malfeasance from his perspective because, again, he's there as a representative, ultimately works for the people he's investigating. So, therefore, uh, you can expect to have uh, more of a soft uh, presentation of, of the findings. John Durham is not under those constraints. And so you you will likely see a considerably, considerably more damning evidence coming from Durham. So we've had many discussions, Rick, over the years, it seems, about James Comey. I think you and I both wanted to give him the benefit of the doubt several, several years ago. This report mm-hmm. was released. He said he was vindicated. But then Michael Horowitz in committee said no one is vindicated as a result of this right. report. What are your thoughts on Comey? Well, James Comey is, is, has proven to be a complete narcissist and can, in total denial about what's going on out there and, and the fact that he's neck deep in it. He played a role in the, in the malfeasance with regard to the, securing the FISA warrant and continuing the authorization of the FISA warrant even after exculpatory evidence was present or should have been present. That's also part of the process is that when you have exculpatory evidence, you're required to present that. It wasn't uh, even Horowitz's uh, report, I believe, found that to be the case. So he is far from exonerated, and I, I, I wouldn't speculate as to what Durham's report will lead to in, in terms of criminal action against Comey, but there is certainly the potential for Comey, Brennan, and Clapper to be involved in some sort of criminal action. In fact, it appears that, you know, some of the things I've seen in the media that there is now some dissension in the ranks among those three. Um, you know, and it may be that they're trying to get their story straight, or it may be that, you know, Rad's leaving the sinking ship. I'm not sure how to describe it. But um, there's some problems there that, that are they're going to have a tough time reconciling their stories based on, on uh, what I think John Durham will present. And, and there will be indictments handed down of some higher-level officials. I'm almost certain of it. We're talking again with Congressman Rick Crawford. Rick, I saw you, uh, and we played this on Tuesday of the show, but you were on Fox and Friends first a week ago, today actually, Mm -hmm. and you mentioned that the president is trying to make sure that what happened to him never happens to another president again. Well, that's the problem with this process is that it has been hijacked and weaponized for political purposes, not because there is some sort of a, um, a real need to remove this president, but because they just don't have any faith in their own ability to win the election. They, they don't have any faith in their ability to win the day in the arena of ideas, and they, they've just run out. And so that's what this is about, and it's unfortunate, but the fact is um, I do think the president is standing against this in, in, in good faith to pre- prevent other presidents from having to face this type of action. Mm. Rick, it's always great to talk to you. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much for giving us some insight into this crazy world that we're watching uh, for Arkansas. And I hope you have a great weekend, sir. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. All right. Rick Crawford, everybody.